you've discovered the poverty gene? Is that where we're at? Isn't this your field of study? Yes, I'm an evolutionary biologist. I can't wrap my head around the idea that you think poor people were genetically predisposed to being poor. And if genes matter to behavior, then socialistic systems are unsustainable. You, you like to see more equality, right? More, more people living their best lives, I would assume. I'm fine with poverty existing. I don't want to combat it because when you start combating it, what do you think causes crime? Causes crime? Uh, I mean, what causes people to eat and consume pornography and do ABC? It's just, it's the human brain. The human brain yeah, so, causes so, crimes. So the answer is poverty. Poverty is typically the most common precursor to crime. And it makes sense. If you don't have money to feed yourself or you happen to be addicted to drugs, you're probably going to turn to crime to be able to feed yourself or get yourself those drugs. So it has nothing to do with some kind of innate probability. There's there's no gene for poverty that exists within the human genome. You don't know that. Okay. Is that, is that what you're proposing? You've discovered the poverty gene? Is that where we're at? No, because genes don't work that way. It's not a poverty gene or a homosexuality gene. The problem is that the human genome is a complex entity. And some, some of it makes you more likely to be intelligent, less likely to be intelligent. And down the line, in the causal influence of thousands of genes, uh, you may have paths that lead to more likely criminality or less likely to be criminal. And... Um, or less likely to be poor or more likely to be poor. Uh, there's is, definitely is, polygenic studies that show genetic correlation with wealth, genetic correlation with IQ and educational attainment. So there's the answer to your question is almost yes. It's just not one gene. It's a thousand genes. Isn't this your field of study? Yes, I'm an evolutionary biologist. Yeah. So why is your understanding of this so cartoonish? Like, I, I, I don't, I can't wrap my head around the idea that you think poor people were genetically predisposed to being poor. Well, I will let people judge who's more cartoonish be, between the guy who has no training in biology and asks for the poverty gene and the other guy who does have training in biology and who informs you that we have correlations between genes and poverty and IQ and educational attainment in the thousand counts. Well, yeah, I mean, they'll have to judge between a clown on the internet who makes jokes for a living and someone whose actual academic field of study is in this very <laughs> specialization. <laughs> I mean, do you have an argument? Because I can pull the studies, we can get into the nature papers that look into the meta study of all twin studies. And the thing is, do you have an argument or do, do we have nothing here? Uh, yeah, I, I do have an argument. According to the uh, International Monetary Fund, as well as numerous studies on what is the causal link between poverty uh, and crime, it's almost always established that crime is a precursor, uh, sorry, poverty is a precursor to crime. Like that that, that has been established time and time again. I, I, I've yet to see anyone propose the fact that there is a genetic link for people becoming poor outside of maybe what? like uh, the bell curve. Well, <laughs> uh, you can get into nature papers and you type genetic correlation between uh, GWA studies and twin studies, and you'll find you'll find genome-wide association analysis of risk tolerance and risky behavior. That's one that's more specialized. I would have to find the one that gives all the answers that you want. But there's definitely genetic correlation between the genes, on the one hand, the twin studies establishing the polygenic influence of genes and all of the factors we've talked about. Now, have you ever realized that it's not because there's a correlation between poverty and criminality that this is not this correlation is not ultimately explained by a genetic influence? Well, yeah, but I think the idea between correlation and causation there, I mean, you're doing the heavy lifting on the other part, right? At the end of the day, if it's poverty that is going to be the, the precursor to crime, then those who are impoverished most likely will have lower test scores on whatever like quotient you're trying to give them. They'll have lower IQ scores, obviously, because they are embattled in poverty. That wouldn't surprise me to find that out. That does, that's not an indicator that somehow they're genetically predisposed to being poor. Like I've never heard anyone suggest that, that there happens to be a genetic coding that makes people like impoverished. 
Well, uh, you can go uh, look why evolution is true. The blog, they have a post recently called How Much Variation in Human Behavior is Due to Variation in Our Gene? Answer, quite a bit. And so the reason you've not been exposed to these ideas is that you've been presumably hanging out in uh, social circles of leftism. Uh, there is seriously no scientific question today that the genes influence all of the factors we talked about, criminality, IQ, educational attainment, wealth, uh, it's definite. The, the definite answer is yes, and you, you'll see the link to the original peer-reviewed study in that blog post. Are we going to talk about uh, capitalism or socialism at all? Is, is that going to be on the menu? Or? Well, you know, it, it, we're still talking about it. That's the important thing is that we're, we're talking about these issues because if evolution applies to humans, and it does, and if genes matter to behavior, then socialistic systems, welfare systems, UBI systems are unsustainable over evolutionary times. That is my point tonight. And I, all I hear is adominance, insults, jokes, a guy who recognizes himself that he's a comedian on the internet, uh, I, I was expecting more. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I was not, so I've been I've been basically met with exactly what my expectations uh, presented. I'll I'll say this though, when it when it comes to all those problems and, and what exactly is the causal link and, and what exactly is going to create, uh, let's say, more poverty in society. Ultimately, you would want to see less, right? I, I'd assume less poverty. Yeah. Less, less poverty. You, you like to see more equality, right? More, more people living their best lives, I would assume. Not necessarily. You know, I, I take planet Earth as what it is. You know, when I look at the population, whether it's of animals, of plants or of humans, I don't see something that must be manipulated towards something better because of my taste. I don't have that kind of narcissism to think that my preferences over the world should overtake it. I, I see it as a natural system that will develop and that will either sustain or not sustain. And so when I look at humanity, I'm fine with our past, for example. You know, if, if I look at the human population a million years ago, I can imagine that they were living kind of rough lives. And I don't take issue with this. I'm fine with what we are. We are animals. We come from populations of apes, and we are subject to evolution. I'm fine with everything we've went through. And sometimes I think that in what we think is an advance, we are actually directing our societies toward systems that should not be uh, should not be adopted, and that we should yes return to a state that is perhaps more poor but more in line with nature. I mean, from my perspective, I think if we both agree that humans evolve over time, so do economic systems evolve over time, then we should be taking the aspects of those economic systems and then utilizing what works the best and then trying to improve our lives and the lives of everyone around us. Because ultimately, it's not even from like an egotistical thing. It can be from a more like selfish reason. I think everyone's lives are better when everyone is collectively thriving. The more poor people there are, the more people who are like suffering on the street, the less quality of life you or me is going to have. I mean, the more crime that there's on the street, the more problems everyone else is going to have. If you improve the lives and the conditions of everyone around you, then we will also live better lives. That's one way to see it. Uh, you know, there were poor times in the past of my great grandparents that somehow, sometimes I think it was still a better time and a better world. So it's not all about wealth, definitely. And there are desirable things of societies of the past that got abolished by the current uh, eccentric lifestyle and the over perfusion of wealth and money and the system. And I'm fine with poverty existing. I don't want to combat it because when you start combating it, you start entering the game of unsustainability, the game of feeding the birds, feeding the squirrels. And to me, that's a dangerous path to take. Um, I, I don't know where we move from here, James. Did did we? Have, do you want to go to the next section, or should we? We shall. And so.